Happy Friday to all. We have Kenton's keys to the VMI matchup on Saturday. We'll also give our final thoughts and predictions there. And of course, it's Fan Friday. We'll be addressing our top comments of the week. You are Locked On Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Wolfpack Nation, welcome back to another episode of Locked on Wolfpack, free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's Friday opening sponsor is LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. Again, happy Friday to all. As always, I'm Grayson Boone. Joining me is Kenton Gibbs. We have Kenton's keys here to kick off our Friday show. Our final thoughts and predictions for the VMI matchup. 2 p.m. on Saturday on the CW Network. Going to be weird to watch it on the CW Network. Hopefully, uh, no issues there. I know a lot of folks have had some problems with Spectrum. We're also hoping for a beatdown to be putting down on the key debts. First of all, his mama named it WB, so I'm going to call him WB, okay? Wonderful. I ain't calling call him no CW. I ain't calling him no UPN. No, I'm just joking. But uh, seriously, you know, it'll be exciting to see who the crews are on the uh, CW uh, game presentations and all that because, you know, uh, Bally Sports was not just a hard-to-access uh, group of channels. It was also just a terrible, terrible production. Let's just be honest, right? Like, very amateur hour stuff. Very, very nasty work. But what shouldn't be nasty work is the NC State performance this Saturday if these keys are followed and won. All right, Kenton, offense. Here we go. Yeah, so first thing is you all can see on YouTube. If you're not on YouTube, get on YouTube. No, I'm just joking. Wherever you listen to this podcast that the first key is a 70% completion percentage, okay? 70% completion percentage. All the keys are to reflect that this game is not about the key debts. It's not. Correct. It's not. This game is about the pack. If the pack does what they need to do or what we need to do, it would not matter what the key debts bring. So the first key is a 70% completion percentage. I'm sorry to tell you, we don't push the ball down the field enough for me to justify where we're currently at, which is about 63%, I want to say. We, we just don't take enough deep shots for me to say that makes sense. And moving forward from there, the throwing window should be significantly bigger than they were against Notre Dame with all due respect. So 70% completion percentage is the first key. Next, I am once again coming to you all as humbly as I know how, <laughs> asking, pleading, begging, if you will, for more Michael Allen touches. He needs to touch the ball at least 10 times. He needs 10 touches. That is what will put this team in a good position. Number three, which is 4.5 or more yards per carry on the ground. Here's the thing. Our running game has looked terrible. Um, Non-existent, if you will, in these first few games. That cannot continue. We do not have the type of quarterback in Brendan Armstrong, and I feel like him throwing 47 passes a game is a good thing for us. I don't, nor will I ever. So with that being said, 4.5 yards on the ground, get it done. I don't want to hear any complaint about it. It's a must. Yeah, I mean, 47 pass attempts for Brendan Armstrong might not be a good thing. I don't think 19 rush attempts for Brendan Armstrong is a good thing either. There has to be some semblance of a run game in this VMI game. This is the perfect time to work out all the kinks that you've been struggling with on the ground, whether it is run block, whether it's just simply field vision for running backs, whatever it may be, it has to get better in this game. It's the perfect tune-up game. So yes, we want to see us moving the ball through the air as always, but on the ground too, because that will 
that will push us to the next level offensively as the season wages on. As far as Michael Allen goes, we have to see Michael Allen in this game. We're consistently begging and pleading that Michael Allen gets the rock. If he doesn't play that much in this game, then I think it's fair to assume that something is going on because there's just no logical explanation here. The pass completion percentage, I want to see this, and stick with me here, I want to see this as a total throughout the day. And I say that because I'm expecting multiple quarterbacks to play for NC State, not because there's a competition, but because we should be scoring so many points that the twos and the threes are playing in this game. So I want to see them maintain that level once they come in as well. Of course, the elephant in the room, you more than likely, if things go the way they're supposed to, you more than likely will see MJ Morris in this game. So for everyone that has clamored for him, get ready. I'm assuming you're going to see him in some capacity, but when he comes in, I want to see that continued level or continued high rate of accuracy uh, that folks have been pleading for. You, you sure it's not a competition? You sure about that? You well, sure about that? No, I'm just joking. No, you're right. You're a thousand percent right. Yeah. yeah listen, as much as some of us uh, would love to see a competition, and let me not say some of us because I'm not a guy who likes QB competitions all that much. I like to have a guy that everybody knows, hey, this is the guy you're rolling out with that. Um, but no, I agree. We should see some MJ Morris. You know, we might even see a little Lex Thomas appearance in there. How about that? Huh? How about a little Lex Thomas in there? Uh, legacy but, Lex. Exactly. Oh, Legacy Lex. Oh, I love that big name. Is that what they call him? I just came up with that on the spot. <laughs> oh, God. That, we're, we're coining that. We're legacy coining Lex. That. Legacy Lex. We need to see him. Um, but very seriously, this is this is a game where, you know, at the end of the day, that 70% completion percentage, I thought I was being generous, honestly and truly. I, I think I'm being generous because they have a really good corner to where, like, all right, you don't want to throw at that guy. It's about the precision of our offense. And now let's move over to the defensive side of the ball. Absolutely. So the first one, you know, we've allowed two 70-plus yard runs so far this year. I'm bringing that way down. No runs over 20 yards allowed in this game. And I wanted to say 10, but I felt like 10 was being too aggressive. It was actually too much. The reality is very simple. I feel like Every time that we've had a huge run happen against us, it's not because somebody got blasted up out of a hole. It's because we did not strain hard enough to get into the proper hole or we overran the hole that we were supposed to be in. But anyway, seriously, we've we've done a bad job of um, just being where we have to be. And that's what's allowed some of these huge runs. Be where you're supposed to be. There should be, and, and I hate to use this quote, but uh, Dave Huxtable said it when he was the defensive coordinator. And if there's anything that I will take from him, I will always take this from him. There should be a hat in every gap. There should be a gap, a hat, a gap, a hat, a gap, a hat. Every time we pull up the tape on a running play, that is exactly what we should see. A gap, a hat, a gap, a hat, a gap, a hat. That's what it should be. So no 20 yard, no 20 plus yard runs allowed. By the way, Grayson was laughing like that because I privately told him many stories from Hux, and I'm sure that he was worried about what would come out there in terms of quotes from Hux. <laughs> we kept it PG. The next one, two-plus turnovers generated. Through the first two games as a whole, we have generated two turnovers. Through the first two games as a whole. This defense is about creating chaos. Do you know one of the greatest barometers for how much chaos you're creating? Turnovers. Turnovers. Get two of them, please, and thank you. Last but not least, all of our starting linebackers, we need five tackles each. I'm going to read this off to you, and I'm, you know, we heard all year about how this team could be better than last year's and all that good stuff. Last year, Isaiah Moore, Peyton Wilson, and Drake Thomas, each of them, each of them, all three of them, had at least 82 tackles. Now, I'm no math whiz. 82 divided by 13 is a little over six. So we've taken that down one tackle to get our linebackers there for this uh, for this year. I'm, I'm sorry, for this game. Now, if we're looking at our linebackers right now, there's only one linebacker that's currently covering that threshold of six. That's Peyton Wilson. That's Peyton Wilson. We don't have a single other linebacker that is even in that ballpark. 
The next linebacker is Caden Fordham with six. Mm. So mm. after after Peyton Wilson, he, who's averaging 12 tackles a game, the next closest guy's at three. I need five tackles apiece from every linebacker. That's that's every starting linebacker at least. So these defensive keys here, they kind of also relate to the offensive keys. This game is not about VMI. It's about yes. NC State. And it's going to be yeah. about cleaning up some of the, the miscues we saw in both the UConn game and the Notre Dame game. The gap assignments have to tighten up. The coverage needs to be there. I'm, I'm looking for a lot more out of the secondary. I think forcing the issue uh, is going to be obvious against VMI. I, I don't expect them to be able to beat our run defense, so they're going to have to throw it. So you could see a potential pretty fun game uh, for the secondary, but I want to see turnovers with that. I want to see some picks. I want to see maybe even a house call in there. Uh, so I want to see the havoc. The, again, yeah. Kenton, you just mentioned it. This defense was getting so much buzz over the offseason that they they haven't taken a step back. They could be even better. We haven't seen it yet. So if they're going to claim that, they better start turning it up, and it's going to have to start this weekend. I'll tell you this much. If this defense continues on the pace they're on right now, it's not that they've taken a step back. They've taken a hop, a leap, a jump, a electric slide back, if you will. In just one moment here, we're going to start our Fan Friday addressing some of our top comments of the week after a quick word from our sponsors. Our first ad of the day is LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have the best access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. So add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are hiring. You can use simple tools like screening questions to make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can pr quickly prioritize who you would like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. College football season is here, and this season, Locked On is kicking up our coverage with Locked On College Football Kickoff Live each Friday. Locked On will go live from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. East. College Football Kickoff Live will cover playoff implications, the conference rivalry games, and go in-depth like only Locked On can. This includes insight and analysis from our stable of Locked On College hosts covering their team every day. Find Locked On College Football Kickoff Live every Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern on any Locked On College YouTube channel. You won't want to miss it, especially because our very own Kenton Gibbs is a part of the national panel. So be sure to check out Kenton and the crew every Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. Now, getting into Fan Friday, we had a ton of comments to weed through this week. Our first comment comes from Wolfpacker. I don't know how they got that handle. That's pretty sick. Mm -hmm. uh, they say, Porter Rooks is the second coming of Devin Carter. Hey, now. Hey, now. Says, every year I think this will be his year. For as hyped as he was coming in, he has been very disappointing. Porter Rooks has been kind of buried behind Thayer Thomas for the last two or three years. So he did, he did have that to overcome. But on the second piece of this, he's been a little less than exciting so far this year. You know, this is basically his time to shine with Thayer moved on to the NFL it's his job to lose, and I know I know he's listed above Juice Vereen, but from what I've seen out of Juice Vereen, I don't know how much more Porter Rooks will be seeing if the drops continue. Oh, man. This is particularly hilarious to me because I've talked on this show many a time about how it felt like Groundhog's Day every year going in with Devin Carter. You're like, all the tools are there. This is going to be his year. He's going to be great this year. Um, but, no, very seriously – Porter Rook still has time to not be the second coming of Derek Carter. Like, he still has time to not be that. He can still prove us wrong this year. But, brother, them allegations are on you. Them allegations are on you. It's time for you to beat them. The evidence time for you to beat them. backed up a little bit. And, uh, again, that, the allegations are there. Just go ahead and prove, prove Wolfpack or any others wrong. Come on now. Certainly a good opportunity for Porter to beat the Devin Carter allegations 
uh, beginning with VMI this weekend. Absolutely. Our next question comes from Leaf Outlaw 8402. They say, I don't understand the Michael Allen situation either. I was screaming at the TV last year that he was the best back. When he touched the ball, big chunks of yards were gained. I just knew he was going to get the bulk of the carries this year, dot, dot, dot. Apparently, I promise that neither Kenton and I wrote this one. This this did come from another person, but it sounds exactly like the two of us. Where is Michael Allen? He is the best running back we have, point blank, period. He's got to be on the field. Yeah, and uh, last year, Michael Allen was second in yards per carry, only the Demi Sumo. Um, and so I was right there with you, Leaf Outlaw. We're, we're, you see, we've had two games straight where getting Michael Allen the ball was a key. So I promise you, we're right there with this ain't the Kibbles and Bits commercials, but we're, we're hoping we're right there, right there saying, please get the man the ball. And it, it will continue to be a key, I think, until we reach that level. And then we might just start upping his carry amount. Next you comment know? comes from T to the Rock. They say exactly what we've been saying. This game has less to do with anything that VMI is doing and more what NC State is doing to get better. Run the ball and score touchdowns. Let's get it. Yeah, run game is going to be paramount in this game. Establish the run right out of the gate. Get it done this week. T to the rock, knower of ball. Good job. Absolutely. 100% agree. There are many games where you say it's not about them, it's about us. And this is one of them. You know, it's about what State has to do to get it done. And that's what's going to be important here. Dominating at the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball are going to be important here. Our next one, it's time to get a little funky on a Friday. We got Bob Funk in the chat. He says, Roz is a guy I want to see more. And I totally agree. We need more height on the outside. I just don't get why Anai is giving Brennan Armstrong 5'11 guys on the outside to throw 50-50 balls to. Yeah, we talked about this as well this week. I liked what I yeah. saw from Dakari Collins. Sure, it was in garbage time, but he's what, 6'4", 6'5"? Yeah. Love the yeah. height there. Rosner, yeah. now listen, hand up on Rosner. I was hesitant to start to get excited about him when he committed. From what I saw from Notre Dame, he will continue to prove me wrong because he looked very good, and the size is evident. Let me tell you something. Old man Rosner may be two days away from getting arthritis, but that boy can ball. You understand? He may have to go for prostate exams between practice, but he can do it. The young man has, you know, he's shown up and showed out at multiple points um, er so far this early in the season. I agree with in terms of 50-50 balls to 5'11 guys. I literally tweeted that during the game. Don't do it. Don't do it. Bob Funk, another knower of ball. I uh, always am excited to see uh, old Bob Funk in here. So, yeah. Next question here. This is actually a very good question. This comes from Andy Alcon. He says, so who needs to get right more this weekend? Run offense, pass offense, or defense? Kenton, I'll let you go first. Oh, there's an obvious answer. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the best answer for keeping it a book. The answer is yes. All three of these aspects need to get better. Um, Yes, the answer is yes, all three. Yeah, no, I, I certainly agree with yes, but my initial answer just off the rip was run offense. You've probably heard me talk about it multiple times on this episode alone. I want to see us move the ball on the ground. That controls the clock. It can control the tempo. It opens up more through the air. We need to establish a run offense for the rest of the season especially, but it can start this Saturday. Next Absolutely. question comes from Dennis. I don't want to butcher your last name, Dennis, but I will take a shot at it. I think it's Hol Holska, Dennis Holska. Please yell at me if I'm wrong. He says, I need slash want to see a pick six from Shy Battle or just a big play from any of our defensive backs. Yeah, I think that has a pretty high likelihood this weekend as well. I think our run defense is going to show up to play. I think VMI is not going to be able to gain much of anything at all on the ground, which will force them to throw it. And I think we're going to be able to get enough pressure on Ironside, their quarterback, that will, it will probably force them into some poor throws. And you could see a field day breakout for the NC State secondary. We have dropped more picks than the Oklahoma City Thunder could possibly pick up. And if you know anything about that organization, <laughs> they are all about getting picks and draft They're just capital. sitting on picks. They're sitting on picks here. And so uh, I'm very, you know, 
it's been very disappointing, honestly. It's been very disappointing because you never want to get too upset about it because it's like, oh, well, it's a defender in position to make a play. But make the damn play. Intercept the ball. That's what you got to do. That, knocking down the ball is how you get a camp invite. Interceptions are how you get drafted. You know, make the play. Make the play. You're there. You're in position. Just make the play. And then we do have one more question. Uh, I'm going to save it for our last portion here because it is a little bit of a lengthy question. I also think it'll produce the longest responses out of the two of us. So we're going to answer that in just one moment after another quick word from our sponsors. Our second sponsor for today is FanDuel. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get up to $200 back in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. So now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is super easy to use, and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. All right, and last Fan Friday question here. It comes from Logan Jackson. He says, this might be a doom and gloom mentality from the perspective of the season, but I'm curious your thoughts from the perspective of MJ Morris's future here. Assuming he doesn't leave, my thought is that it might be better for both him and the future of the program to not play him this year at any point. Obviously, you're going to do what you what gives you the best chance to win now, but with weapons that have failed to produce around five different QBs in one-plus seasons, I wonder if his career would benefit in the long run by learning and starting fresh with a year, uh, a year with an eye under his belt and two to three years of a seemingly talented group of receivers coming in. And disclaimer here, he did have more of a response. Let me add this on because I just couldn't fit. Also says, I'd selfishly prefer him to have a chance multiple very successful years than waste a year on the possibility that he takes a seven-win team to eight wins, which I suspect might be the optimistic case for him this year. So certainly a lot to unpack here. Um I think, you know, it's it's interesting that this has come up so early in the season. I can't say I'm necessarily surprised. However, I was about to say, you called it. You were yeah. the one who said by the Notre Dame game, we could be having that conversation about MJ over, uh, over Brennan. Yeah. So the reason I wanted to bring this up on Friday is we do have slightly different opinions on this. I think it's in the best interest of the team to continue to pursue MJ's red shirt and keep him as sort of break glass in case of emergency type deal. I think if things continue to develop and progress with the offense, Brennan can be fine. I think there's been some growing pains with the wide receiving group. I think there's been some growing pains with just the the whole offense formulating in general. I think the best is yet to come. And so I think for the future of the program and keeping MJ here multiple seasons, getting the wide receivers to also progress and develop. I think it's best if we ride the season out with Brennan, because I still do think that we can finish with an eight to nine win year uh, with Brennan as QB one. Why are people so obsessed with this red shirt? And and I mean this very genuinely, because even if he played this year, he'd have what, two more years. Yeah. So why are people so obsessed with this red shirt? Even if we were to say that third year is finally going to be the year, let's time out everybody to that third year, right? At that point, Casey and Juice Vereen are both seniors. At that point, you know, we're we're not sure what almost any other part of the roster functionally looks like. We're not sure what these guys look like playing in college. We're not sure if the guys who have committed to come play here are still sold on this team. What if he can add a plus one to the win total? Put him in. Let him be your guy. I that is just all there is to it. I understand the losing the battle to win the war thing, but this doesn't seem like one of those. We're banking on, hey, the impact that you could have in three years is that vital. And mind you, if MJ Morris hits the ceiling that everybody around Raleigh believes that he can hit, he's not going to be here. He's going to be wearing one of those 32 teams logos. Hopefully it's a a Honolulu blue one with a little big cat on the side, you know, man, speaking into existence. But he's not going to be here. 
So, like, why are we so invested in this idea of, like, he's good enough to to play and, and be successful, but not good enough to get drafted high enough to where it makes sense for him to leave? Are we okay, Wolfpack Nation, including Grayson? Yeah, no, I, I do think there's two interesting points here, one of which you just brought up. We don't know what the team is going to look like two to three years from now. The transfer portal is a whole new world. NIL is something to consider. We really have no idea what our roster is going to look like in two to three years. So, yeah, no, that's that's a valid concern. Um, you know, recruiting-wise, the 2024 class coming in, they seem to be looking very strong, of course, highlighted by Jonathan Paler and Terrell Anderson. So those are some new weapons to get into the system as well. But something else I kind of want to push back on in MJ-wise, I've said this several times on here, I think he will be a rock star when it's all said and done. But we don't even really know what MJ would look like if you plug him in this season. I'm not so convinced that he would just be, you know, a complete commander over this offense and look entirely different than Brennan would. I think with some of the O-line struggles, he'd run into some of the same, you know, issues having to get out of the pocket at a moment's notice. Who knows where the accuracy would be? Of course, I do think he is probably more accurate than Brennan is. But there's just so many variables to account for here. We really don't know what MJ would look like if you were to throw him into the mix here this season. My my biggest thing is this, and I've it's a reason that the the deeper we've gotten into this week, the more anti Brennan Armstrong I've seen, uh, seemed because I've I've watched the film over and over and over again, and I'm telling you, I don't know what it is about that young man's eye discipline. It's like he he's his eyes are where they're supposed to be. The read is there, and he's just like, mm, no, mm, not sure. And don't get me wrong, were the wide receivers running open all the time? No, not saying that at all. But what I am saying, because, again, Notre Dame played excellent coverage for a lot of the game. What I am saying is there were multiple reads that were inexcusably bad from a six-year guy. If MJ looks confused out there, good. He's a true sophomore. Let him learn. A six-year guy looking confused out there, brother, <laughs> there is no more learning for you. It's over. It's done. Pack it up. Fair point. I mean, regardless of who you do have at quarterback, we need better play than what we've had through two games here. Um, of course, mentioned it earlier on this episode. I do expect to see some MJ Morris this Saturday because that means that things have gone well. Uh, yeah. I think if you only see Brennan Armstrong, things have gone <laughs> horribly wrong because that probably means it's a close game of some sort there, um, there is no world where we should only see Brennan Armstrong in this game because if it's a close game hey Brennan, uh, unless our defense has has forgotten how to play defense has just completely forgotten everything they know about defense there is not a world where Brennan Armstrong should be the only quarterback that plays in this game yeah no doubt well before we get out of here Kenton let's go ahead and give our score predictions for the game uh you go first I'm going to say 49 to 14. Okay. I was going to say 49, seven. And that Mm. seven comes like within the last three to four minutes of the game for VMI. I think it's an ultimate garbage time touchdown, but I'm going with 49, seven. That will do it for us here on Friday. Of course, NC state takes on VMI on Saturday, 2 PM on the CW network. As always, thank you all so much for tuning in with us this week and dropping comments. We had tons of comments to pick through. I hope to continue that in the coming weeks as well. Mash that like button, mash that subscribe button, and you will continue to see us. Also, be sure to look for a live episode from us on Saturday evening, immediately following our presumed victory against VMI. So be sure to check us out there. If you don't catch us there, we will see you Monday. Until then, go Pack. Go Pack.